When the ordinary opponents of socialism talk about impossibilities and alterations in human nature, they always miss an important distinction. In modern ideal conceptions of society, there are some desires that are possibly not obtainable, but there are some desires that are not desirable. That all men should live in equally beautiful houses is a dream that may or may not be attained. But that all men should live in the same beautiful house is not a dream at all. It is a nightmare. That a man should love all old women is an ideal that may not be obtainable. But that a man should regard all old women exactly as he regards his mother is not only an unattainable ideal, but an ideal which ought not to be attained. I do not know if the reader agrees with me in these examples, but I will add the example which has always affected me most. I could never conceive or tolerate any utopia which did not leave to me the liberty for which I chiefly care, the liberty to bind myself. Complete anarchy would not merely make it impossible to have any discipline or fidelity, it would also make it impossible to have any fun. To take an obvious instance, it would not be worthwhile to bet if a bet were not binding. The dissolution of all contracts would not only ruin morality, but spoil sport. Now, betting and such sports are only the stunted and twisted shapes of the original instinct of man for adventure and romance, of which much has been said in these pages. And the perils, rewards, punishments and fulfilments of an adventure must be real, or the adventure is only a shifting and heartless nightmare. If I bet, I must be made to pay, or there is no poetry in betting. If I challenge, I must be made to fight, or there is no poetry in challenging. If I vow to be faithful, I must be cursed when I am unfaithful, or there is no fun in vowing. You could not even make a fairy tale from the experiences of a man who, when he was swallowed by a whale, might find himself at the top of the Eiffel Tower, or when he was turned into a frog, might begin to behave like a flamingo. For the purpose even of the wildest romance, results must be real. Results must be irrevocable. A Christian marriage is the great example of a real and irrevocable result. And that is why it is the chief subject and centre of all our romantic writing. And this is my last instance of the things that I should ask, and ask imperatively, of any social paradise. I should ask to be kept to my bargain. To have my oaths and engagements taken seriously, I should ask Utopia to avenge my honour on myself. All my modern Utopian friends look at each other rather doubtfully, for their ultimate hope is the dissolution of all special ties. But again I seem to hear, like a kind of echo, an answer from beyond the world. You will have real obligations, and therefore real adventures, when you get to my Utopia. But the hardest obligation and the steepest adventure is to get there.